Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I am C Tech Dude. Today we're going to be looking at the Galaxy S10. And sure it's an older phone, but it's still worth buying in 2023. Let's take a look. Now the first thing I want to discuss about this phone is the price. I picked this phone up for $150 from Amazon as a renewed phone in good condition. It came in a generic Amazon box, but included the charger and a USB-C cable. Now the phone had a little wear on it, but I still consider it to be in good condition and everything works perfectly on it. The only thing I'm kind of leery of is it keeps its waterproof capability since this phone is used and I have no idea about the history of it, which is something to be mindful of. So $150, this phone is just as cheap as any budget phone out there today. And for a phone that was a flagship just a few years ago, it seems like a good price to me. But let's see how it stacks up. The design of this phone is still beautiful and looks just as good as it did when it came out in 2019. The 6.1 inch WQHD Plus display is still gorgeous, but does only run at 60 Hertz. But colors are vibrant, content from any streaming app you use will look great, and it's just a beautiful, rich display. It gets bright enough for outdoor use and dim enough that it won't kill your eyes at night. Now the only complaint I have about it, the screen is that it's curved, which will be subjective, but I've personally never been a fan of curved displays. The screen has an in-glass fingerprint sensor, which works flawlessly for me about 90% of the time. And that's coming from someone who's never been a fan of the in-display fingerprint sensors. It also does have face unlock, which does use only the front camera to work. So it won't work when you don't have enough light to illuminate your mug, but the screen will auto brighten to try to produce enough light for it to work. And personally, I have face unlock as well as the fingerprint sensor active, so I can just use whichever one works best at the time. And it's nice to have the options. The back of this phone still looks good too. It's all glass and has a triple camera array with just a minimal camera bump. The bottom of the phone has a speaker, that works as a dual speaker and uses the earpiece as the other speaker and it sounds really good to me. No, you're somewhere out there. And oh, it also has a headphone jack. This is one of Samsung's last phones to include the headphone jack and man, I just forgot how much I miss having a phone with it until I don't have one. There's also a USB-C port on the bottom that has quick charge capabilities and it can do Samsung DeX, which is Samsung's desktop-like environment that you can enable when you plug in a supported dock or DeX cable into it. The top of this phone has a SIM card slot, as well as a micro SD card slot to supplement the 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. And again, this is one of the last phones to include this wonderful storage option. There's a power button on the right, volume keys, and a dedicated Bixby key on the left, whose placement I do find annoying since I hit that button about 80% of the time when I'm trying to hit the volume down. Unfortunately, there is a way to customize the Bixby key to do something more useful, which is nice. Now to do that, you must be signed into your Samsung account and then head to Settings, Advanced Features, Bixby key, and change Bixby to double press, and then you can map the single press of the button to any app you want. Now I chose the flashlight, but the phone does have to be unlocked to use the Bixby key, so you can't use it from the lock screen, which is kind of a bummer, but it's okay. And then under the hood, this phone has a Snapdragon 855 processor, and that's paired with eight gigs of RAM. Now the processor and RAM combo still hit up really well in 2023, and I've never experienced any slowdowns or desire for something more powerful, really. Now software support is unfortunately no longer being maintained, so you will be stuck with Android 12 forever with only the occasional security updates. And that's a bit of a bummer, but most phones at this price point and in this category won't get software upgrades either, so it's not the biggest deal. But fortunately, the Samsung One UI 4 build of Android 12 that this Samsung Galaxy S10 is running works great, and I have no real complaints about the software. It's packed with a lot of features and uh, customization options. A few of my favorites are, of course, the always-on display, the edge panel, which if you swipe from the left side of the screen, it'll show your favorite apps. And you can also do split view, which is really cool. It's a multitasking thing where you can have two apps on top of each other, and I really love that. Now battery capacity on paper is pretty disappointing at 3400 milliamp hours, but much to my surprise, battery life on this phone is actually pretty good. I can easily get through the day with about 40% remaining when the phone set to Full HD+, and about 25% remaining when I set it to WQHD+, but this is going to be subjective and based on your own usage. Now I won't even pretend to be a power user, but I do play the occasional game on my phone while using Chrome, Reddit, social media throughout the day, as well as taking pictures and videos of my kids, and everything I do feels fast and snappy while getting pretty good battery life. Now, speaking of pictures, this phone does hold up wonderfully still, this camera, and you can access the camera from double pressing the power button on the lock screen, which is really cool. It has a 12 megapixel wide sensor, a 16 megapixel 123 degree field of view wide angle camera, and a two times optical lens for telephoto. Now the main wide angle sensor camera is still awesome and performs well in most lighting conditions. And the camera app includes a lot of features, including a night mode, portrait video, and it can record video up to 4K 60 frames per second. 
All in all, this camera system is still a really solid package, and it's got a lot of options for uh, whatever shooting you want to do with the phone. I have no real complaints about the camera setup on the S10, and at this price point, you won't find any budget phones that can touch it. So overall, this phone is still an awesome device and a pleasure to use. If you can find a new phone or a lightly used one under 200 bucks and are weighing your options between this one and a similarly priced budget phone, I would not hesitate to recommend this phone to you. Now that being said, let me weigh the pros and cons of buying this phone now in 2023. The pros are it's still a beautiful phone with a solid design and amazing screen, great cameras and good battery life with tons of pictures and video options, and a really good software experience. Now the cons are no more software support, so you will be stuck in Android 12 forever. And the screen is only 60 hertz, and there's no 5G support, which is a bit of a bummer. And the battery capacity is pretty small, and it's three years old now, so you might have some battery degradation in your unit. But if you guys still have the Galaxy S10, let me know in the comments below how it's holding up for you in 2023. If you have any other phones you're curious about how they perform, let me know in the comments and I will see if I can pick them up and review them for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I wish you all a very happy new year. Thanks for watching. You just got CE Tech. Talk to you later.